In today's session, as we already talked about, we're going to be really focusing in on the cloud data security dilemma, specifically around how do we deal with AI in the age of various privacy acts. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about the Colorado Privacy Act and its right to deletion. And so we have this, I'll call it a creative tension between the business that needs access to data and legal compliance, other parts of the organization that have this mandate to enforce these privacy acts to keep all of us data consumers, uh, people safe, really. And so we're going to be talking about specifically, what does this look like with Amuda and Starburst? When we think about Amuda, we really operate within the identify, protect, detect part of the NIST cybersecurity framework, as well as the data security slice when we think about the DAMA data, data governance wheel. How Amuda is able to do what it does in conjunction with Starburst is by combining data metadata and user metadata. On the data metadata side, you can think about that. Um, they might be coming from an external data catalog. Maybe we're utilizing Amuda's built-in sensitive data discovery. Any way we can really understand, you know, what is the particular column contents? Is this a email? Is this a social? Is the gender, right? All this different data metadata really understand what are we talking about? The second journey we're going to talk about here today is user metadata. So typically we might be pulling this in from a center of identity like a ping ID, maybe an entry ID, maybe an Okta. Anything that supports SAML, OpenID, or LDAP will work great for this. But ultimately, we want to come away with some amount of information about the geography of a particular data consumer, data engineer. Maybe it is their position in the role hierarchy, what particular data trainings they may have taken. And once we have those two sets of metadata, then we're able to combine those into dynamic immutable policies, which are really going to allow us to scale up the primitives within Starburst today. So as data metadata changes, right, maybe there's new schemas that land, maybe there's new columns that get added, right? Amuda is going to pick up on that and say, okay, we have a change in the data metadata. And so therefore we need to reevaluate re the dynamic policies and then push those primitives into Starburst to make sure that the controls are effectively materialized. Or if we have a data consumer, right, that switches business units, well, then we need to pull in that updated user metadata, which is then going to form potentially if they have by birthright access to, to new tables, potentially new rows of data, new columns of data. This plays out with a, a muted data policy. This is what we're looking at here. And just to kind of showcase what the, the basic format of this is going to look like, right? We're combining then the data metadata with the user metadata, right? And so in this case, anywhere muted knows about a person name, we're going to apply an alphanumeric hash unless they're part of that claims group. So just kind of hold on to this basic format. Amuda is able to do this with two major policy constructs. They're gonna be managing those Starburst primitives. We have our subscription policies. You can think about those like table grants on steroids, right? If I were to say, have an example like, anyone who's part of the finance group should get opted into tables that contain bank account routing information. That'd be an example of a birthright or default subscription policy. Or perhaps if we were to do this more in request-based workflows for say a data marketplace, we might have the option to write a subscription policy that says, if you're part of the finance group, then you should be able to request access to tables that contain bank account routing information. On the deny side, we have our data policies. These are gonna materialize out into column and row masking constructs within Starburst, right? So if I have that, anyone who's part of the finance group should get opted into tables that contain bank account routing information. I should probably also have a data policy that says you have to be part of the finance group and be a director and have taken the PI data training as well as the PCI data training 
to be able to then see those banking out routing numbers in the clear. Perhaps you might have a data policy like that. Where Amuta sits in kind of enterprise architecture, when we think about how data consumers are interacting with, say, Starburst, right? So whether those are AI workloads that are training data, maybe protect, maybe direct uh, BI workloads pulling in some data as data scientists sort of build out their models. I mean, just kind of sitting over to the side, right? And orchestrating then the primitives within Starburst, right? We're not in the data path. We're not in the query path. Ultimately, what we're going to be talking about today is sucking in information from potentially an external data catalog or utilizing Amuta's built-in sensitive data discovery, that journey number one, that data metadata journey. Then we're going to talk about journey number two, which is pulling in that user metadata. And then finally, pull, putting those two sets of data, met, data metadata and user metadata together to be able to then create policy. And now if we think about specifically our use case today, how do we deal with the Colorado Privacy Act right to deletion as it's sort of called in the age of AI? Now, if we look at sort of the summary of the bill text here uh, that was signed into law the other year, consumers have the right to opt out of a controller's processing of their personal data. Now, this is very similar to the GDPR and the CCPA and other kinds of privacy acts where you don't necessarily have to break your, uh, your foreign keys, your, your constraints on your tables. You just have to make sure that all that processing stops on those records that are to do with the particular individual. And so that's what we're going to do here today. We're going to go through, take that journey number one the data metadata, we're going to talk about journey number two, user metadata, and then we're going to build out a policy that combines those two sets of metadata to stop the processing on those particular records. So let's get into the setup here I did today. So I have a, a muted tenant running, as well as a Starburst tenant running in my uh, Amazon VPC here. And I have I'll be playing kind of my super user here, data governor, if you will, in my left-hand browser window. In my right-hand browser window, I'll be playing Bob, who's gonna be kind of our data analyst, who's gonna be logged into Starburst, uh, working with particular kinds of data here. Um, and as we work through, Bob's gonna get access to a particular table uh, that he's gonna be inspecting for training on some AI models. We're gonna walk through how that progresses and then how we ultimately enforce the stipulation within the Colorado Privacy Act of no longer processing data on particular transactions. So let's get into it here. So the first step is the data classification journey, getting that data metadata. So I'm gonna go into Amuta here. I'm gonna go to my test table here, my credit card transactions table. I'm gonna go very quickly to the data dictionary. Should be very familiar to most of you here today, right? We've got the physical column names down the left side. We've got the column types in the center, but the new part are going to be these data identification and classification tags. So when I onboarded this uh, series of resources as a data owner, I went through and said, okay, hey, I've got a Starburst data source. Give me some information to be able to pull down the metadata, right? Essentially the database name, table name, schema name, that sort of thing, maybe some column names. And then do I want to suck in the entire database, particular schemas, particular tables? And then I also turned on column detection as well as sensitive data discovery. So if we go back to our table, right, this uh, stage credit card transactions table, that's how I arrived at having all these different data classification and identification tags. In addition, I also called out the transaction ID that we're going to be sort of keying off of in our right to be forgotten or right to deletion uh, use case with the Colorado Privacy Act, right? So this is going to allow Amuta to operate against the higher level business context instead of saying we have to operate against a specific Starburst column called ID, right? So anywhere we find this tag, I'm using to go ahead and say, okay, these are the trans, we're gonna inspect this for the transaction IDs that we care about. You also notice here that I have 
correctly identified. We've got some credit card numbers. We've got uh, you know some other kinds of information here, customer last name, that sort of thing. So that's really going to be that journey number one is data metadata. Journey number two is the user classification. So if we were to talk about a source of identity being perhaps a ping ID, enter ID, opt ID, and that sort of thing, I could talk about myself in terms of both attributes as well as groups. So for example, if I go into the settings here and we look at my attributes, right? I could talk about myself as a very high level access, right? I have a very high level security classification. Maybe I'm part of the data operations team, right? So you can kind of combine both attribute-based access control as well as role-based access control methodologies here. Contrasting that with my demo user here today, let's go look at Bob's attributes and groups. This is gonna play into the default or birthright access control paths. You'll notice here Bob should be kind of, mm, we'll call him geofenced, the Western US and Western Canada, has a lower level of access, right? It only has kind of access to proprietary, proprietary security classification data. And it's kind of in a sales finance analyst RevOps role, if you will. So if I were to go ahead and do this connection, right, we can go in the, into the Immuta app settings here. I already have a enter ID as well as an Okta tenant set up. What you have to go about doing essentially is creating a SAML endpoint, do some skim, skim configuration, right? Because most of the service jobs, right, they're gonna be doing this AI training are probably not described or never gonna be logged into Immuta. Similarly, you might have a data analyst, data scientist who's kind of building out these models who probably may not even know that Immuta is part of the enterprise architecture here. So that's just kind of some setup you have to do. Let's get to the interesting part, which is where we get into policy. So as you recall, subscription policies opt people into data, data policies deny or sort of filter down that access. I already have a number of subscription policies turned on. Um, let's take a look at one of them here, just for the sake of example. And you'll notice it's that same pattern, right, of combining the user metadata here, right? So if you are fall in the sales group, as well as you possess the confidential security classification, then you're able to automatically get opted into direct tables that contain direct identifiers, right? And now there are some other paths you can take here to get access, right? So if I were to say, be someone who doesn't necessarily look like this, I can still request uh, approval to get access to these sorts of things. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I flip over to my right-hand browser window as Bob, let's go ahead and get access to some of this data, right? So we can be able to run this query to be able to do our job. So if I were to go into Muta, I can go and look at, for my particular credit card transactions table here, let's go ahead and get access. I can go ahead and click and get access to this table based upon the already configured paths. Now it's in a pending state. Let me go back and flip over to my governance hat over here. And let's go ahead and approve that access request real quick here. I'm just gonna bypass the review dialog and go and straight ahead and approve that. When we refresh this here, it should no longer be in a pending state, but now as a subscriber, right? So Bob is able to view this data, right? Essentially what Immuta has done under the hood is created those grant statements within Starburst here. So now Bob's able to read this data. Let's focus in on some specific transactions. These are gonna be the ones that we're gonna be removing from data processing later. All right, those are there. Let's go ahead and now work into data policies where we're gonna actually enforce the Colorado Privacy Act stipulation that we have to stop that data processing. So if I flip back over to my governor hat, Let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my right to deletion policy or stopping that data processing. And if I go into the edit while well, this propagates out and turns into Starburst primitives, let's read, read through this. So we're only gonna show rows where the value in column tagged transaction ID, right? So in anywhere we find that attribute, that piece of data metadata, 
it has to be not in this particular list, right? So transaction ID 101, 201, uh, 301, et cetera. Um, those should not be in the list of transactions. Now, there'd be other ways to do this. We're going to be focusing in on the transactions 101, 102, 201 in this case. Now, we this is a little bit contrived, obviously, right? You're not going to be handwriting all of these different statements. You can do this programmatically through the Muta APIs. Um, you might do a variable substitution. Let's we could look at an example of that, right? Or maybe you have a large scale where statement, you're combining particular external joins with maybe particular attributes. You could do that here as well. Um, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of the primitives that Amuta orchestrates. But the gist of this now, right, if we cancel out of all this, take a look at what we've got going on is that we should expect to see that the, the processing has stopped for any of these different transactions. So if we go back into Bob's view of the world over here, Bob should no longer have access to these particular data points that he might be training his model on, right? So whether that, uh, but whereas there are still all these other data points that are available for training, right? So we'll notice here that, you know, uh, many other transactions. So that's kind of what we wanted to talk about here today, right? How do you in the world of all these privacy acts automate a lot of the compliance around the Colorado Privacy Act, the GDPR, CCPA, other sorts of acts like that that require you to stop processing on data. How do you scale that across all your different team members, modeling jobs, and that sort of thing? Thanks so much for watching today and appreciate the time. Have a great day.